Well, <laughs> will you look at that? Somebody's actually come up all the way up here to visit me. I haven't actually spoken to anyone in a while. It's weird. I n never imagined I'd end up like this. Ever since I was a little boy, way back before the Shattering, I wanted to become one of the most respectable guards on the island. At the time when Driftwood Prison was in operation, Carlson was the head. I wanted to be like Carlson. Better than Carlson. I tried to lead, I tried to uh, <laughs> uh, suck up to him, let's say. I was a happy man back then. Married to a beautiful wife, had a well-paying job, and slowly getting promoted. I didn't care too much as things were just going in the right direction. And there was this one day where the skies went black, the earth rumbled, and the birds stopped singing. The day the shattering began. The gods fought over our realm for days. At the time, we had no idea what was going on and what the rest of the realm was facing. We didn't know if this was something unique or if this was a world-changing event, and we were just a small part of the puzzle. Soon enough, it hit me on the worst day of my life. My own world had shattered. And before I knew it, my heart would follow suit. I went out that day while the storms and godly artillery had calmed to get some food. We didn't have a sustainable eating pattern back then. It was tough to avoid hunger. I was just out there thinking it would be all right. And when it was over, we could return to our normal lives. I'm there hunting for for anything and oh god I shouldn't have left I should have died with her the storms returned I ran and ran as fast as I could but it wasn't enough it was gone. All gone. Her home had burnt down to the ground. I couldn't find her. I couldn't find anything. No memories. No trinkets, no nothing. I couldn't even save a piece of scrap of fabric from the inferno. So I just sat there in the rain, <laughs> watching the smoke rise and waiting, waiting for something to make this all better. I'm still not sure if it even came. Finally, days later, information began to travel. The war is over. The Illuminary had won. <laughs> and she had killed my wife. Her victory had caused all of this destruction. Neither Shendrick nor the Illuminary even considered what would happen in the fallout. But they didn't care. But that blasted war took everything I cared about. Everything I ever loved was gone. I didn't speak up though. And I regret that. I stay in this tower watching the skyline, remembering what I used to have. It's the only safe haven I've got now. You know, I haven't spoken about this for a long time, friend. Ah, Morris, yes. Last time I even talked about this, it must have been five years. Odd man, but he listened, just as you are now. He's been a good friend to me, and maybe you will too. He's still around, 
but I'm not sure you'd know him. He calls himself Edgar, and I knew him. But I'm not sure that's really his name. Anyway, thank you, Morris, for listening to my story. It's not often I have a chance to speak my heart. Maybe one day it will repair itself, but for now, I can keep going with what I have.